So in the past few years, there has been an explosion of new products which are designed, literally designed, in a processing plant to replace meat. Burgers, sausage, chicken nuggets, they all look the part, but are they really healthy for us? Let's find out. Welcome back to Inc. Nutrition, where we're all about mind, body, and food. My name is Jack, registered dietitian, your friendly neighborhood nutrition nerd, and I'm here to translate the science of nutrition to help you live a healthier life. Plant-based meat substitutes. If I even just said those words to my grandmother, she would look at me utterly confused, like I was speaking Mandarin. But then again, my grandma didn't know what a butternut squash was until about a year ago. So when I walk through the center of a grocery store these days, I'm literally astounded by the plethora of products I see in boxes, packages, and cans that we call food. You see, food scientists are modern day magicians. They've become masters at transforming and engineering perfectly fresh and delicious food into ultra processed, highly palatable products in boxes with eye-catching branding. And now their latest invention looks, smells, possibly even tastes like meat. So the first question is why have we created this? Well, it's mostly because of the environmental impact and tis true, there's no denying that the production of animal products takes quite a toll on our environment when it comes to greenhouse gas emissions and you know overall use of resources. But I am not here today to talk about you know the overall sustainability of our food system. Rather, I wanna really just dive into the health and nutritional value of these plant-based meat products. Are these meat substitutes really healthier? Let's objectively compare. Let's really get into the meat of it. First up is the composition of you know, nutrients, okay? So this is just a graph that displays that, right? It compares a name brand plant-based burger to 90% lean ground beef. When it comes to calories, pretty comparable. Um, total fat, very similar. Carbohydrates, okay, the plant-based burger has a little more. Protein, very similar. However, the protein in the beef is gonna be a little more bioavailable. Uh, it's gonna have also all the essential amino acids. And then when it comes to fiber, okay, this is where the plant-based burger has a little bit of an edge. All right, five grams, pretty cool, pretty good. Sodium, okay, way higher salt. Uh, content in the plant-based burger compared to ground beef. And then vitamins, you know, they fortify the uh, plant-based burger with a number of vitamins. Um, and overall, you know, the amounts are comparable to beef, maybe even a little bit more. However, I do question the bioavailability of fortified nutrients. Uh, but as a whole, when you look at the nutrients, you know, pretty similar, okay? So you might look at those numbers and say, wow, the plant-based burger is pretty good. It may be even actually better, nutritionally superior to the beef. But we are going to take a deeper dive and really critically you know, analyze the ingredient list. And I recommend people to do this across the board when it comes to really anything that comes in a package, okay? Don't get so obsessed with the numbers like the grams of fat or the calories. Rather, look at the quality of the ingredients. So here's the ingredient list of a very popular plant-based meat substitute. So first up, we have soy protein concentrate. You know, this is an okay option, but it is inferior to animal protein based on its amino acid profile and bioavailability, like I was mentioning, and is likely coming from genetically modified soybeans, not great for long-term consumption. And then we have sunflower oil. This has been shown to release high amounts of aldehydes, which can be toxic to DNA and cells if overheated when cooking. Then we have methyl cellulose. You know, this is a chemical compound used as a thickener, uh, often used in cosmetic products. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to eat something that's in my shampoo. It does appear to be safe if consumed in moderation, but we're unsure about consistent intake over time. And then salt. Yeah, they add quite a bit of salt, um, you know, for flavor and preservation and too much sodium, as it has been well researched for decades, is no bueno for the heart. Then we have natural flavors. What does this even mean? It's so vague, but you know, they need to add flavor to an unnatural product created in a factory. <laughs> um, culture dextrose, this like off-white powder made of 
Fermented metabolites is designed to inhibit the growth of some bad stuff. So yeah, just a, another preservative. Modified food starch, um, you know, likely added as a binder for the food to stay together. Uh, so you have, you know, starch, which is already a highly processed substance, and then you modify it? How is it even modified? Who knows? And then soy like hemoglobin. Okay, this one, you know, is an ingredient that I actually had never heard of before about a week ago, and that's because it's pretty new, fresh out of the lab. In fact, the lab of a leading manufacturer of these plant-based meat products. It's apparently a, a yeast that has been genetically modified with soy to create an imitation of heme, the natural protein in animal foods, like beef and chicken. Now, is this soy leg hemoglobin safe? Well, I tapped into the research, the research that's available anyways, and the only data that supports the health and safety of this brand new additive comes from research that is directly funded by employees of the plant-based meat companies. Can you say conflict of interest? Now here's the ingredient list of another very common plant-based meat product. I just wanna point out a couple of these additives. So first we have titanium dioxide. This is used in paint, plastic, printing inks, rubber, glass, electric conductors, and it could lead to carcinogenic effects. The European Food Safety Authority states that a safe level for daily intake of this food additive cannot be established. Sounds a tad sketchy to me. Sodium acid pyrophosphate, add that to the spelling bee. Uh, monocalcium phosphate, uh, this is a chemical compound primarily used in commercial fertilizers, but apparently we can eat it. Yeah. Now let's take a look at the ingredient list for steak, beef, pork chops, pork, chicken breast, chicken. Yeah, you get the idea. So we got the nutrient info, we got the ingredient list. I just wanna quickly point out a couple statements from this comprehensive review that does not have any you know, conflicts of interest. Plant-based meat can carry pathogenic bacteria originating from the raw ingredients. Uh, health risks of consuming plant-based meat may also come from the presence of anti-nutrients like protease inhibitors, alpha amylase inhibitors, lectins, and phytic acid, which may inactivate you know, digestive enzymes, impact iron absorption, and even act as an endocrine disruptor so it can like mess with your hormones. High stakes, if you know what I mean. So let's summarize the pros and the cons. So first up, the pros of eating plant-based meat. It is environmentally more friendly, no doubt about it. It does have a little more fiber, okay, which can be helpful. Uh, from a nutrient standpoint on paper, it is comparable to real meat. And then in terms of taste and texture, it is a viable alternative for vegetarians. But a healthy one, meh, I'll let you decide. The cons, okay, first up, there is definitely more sodium in these plant-based meat products. And then while the nutrient composition is comparable, I do question the bioavailability of those nutrients, also inadequate essential amino acids. Now the biggest one, you know, potentially harmful additives. And there's just not enough long-term data to suggest that all the ingredients are good for us. And it is still a highly processed food. You know, it contains a lot of genetically modified organisms. It's not really a food in my opinion. So what are my final thoughts? I do think that livestock production and you know, our current agricultural practices are indeed unsustainable, but is creating you know a, a product with controversial ingredients really the solution mm, i don't know so i personally think we need to go to the root of the problem and make regenerative agriculture you know the priority i still think we can enjoy meat as a society we should just consider the source more right you know find a local butcher find uh, support your local farmer that's really processing meat and raising livestock in the right sustainable ethical way That is how we can move forward having said that I do think we need to just eat more plants right having this mindset of being plant forward Okay, you don't have to eliminate all meat products and animal products, but just being more conscious Okay of, of having more plants will benefit your health. It will benefit the planet uh, but when it comes to these plant-based meat alternatives and substitutions, 
I think at the end of the day, we just need to keep it real, okay? These products, in my opinion, aren't really real food. Plant-based meat is exactly what it says. Meat made in a plant, right? A factory. So let's just enjoy food as food is meant to be eaten, right? In its natural, whole, raw state. And that is what the dietitian ordered. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I would love to hear your thoughts on this subject. So if you want, drop it in the comment below. Please like, please subscribe, and remember that your health begins in your kitchen. Okay, see you next time. I think we need to make regenerative agriculture. I think we need to make regenerative agriculture more of the main sodium acid pyrophosphate. What are we even eating? These are chemicals. Plant-based meat sounds like a mistake, if you ask me. Well, it's mostly because of the environmental. Plant-based meat, yeah, I see the appeal, but here's the deal. Mock meat ain't ideal. When it comes to your meal, keep it real, you feel?